sort of the low no prep tune, so 600 ish would probably be more than enough for a no prep race. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's the owner of the car, so he'd be the he'd okay. be the questionnaire. What do you want to do with but it? Back in driving back in the trailer <laughs> is, is, is the biggest goal. So. Compression or anything? Nope. Uh, Ten to one. Um, inline pro rods. I think they rated. What, they rated those ones at what? Fifteen hundred. Yeah, the seven sixteen rod bolts. They're steel rods. They're not aluminum rods. What does this thing weigh? Uh, with me in it, the last time I waited, it was twenty four fifty. It's still got full doors and roll up glass windows in the front still. So, and I got eighty pounds to lose in the door still. So, okay. I was thinking the next big thing to go to one of those sixty four seventy apexes. Yeah, I was gonna say though, like the Precision and that other like new turbo brands and stuff like that are pretty. Mm -hmm. I've not ran an Apex, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what all the. Or not all of them, but most of the big import guys are switching to is all Apex stuff. So they seem to be having really good, really good luck with them. Oh, down here. Yep. And the most convenient place to work on in this little engine bay. Um. Yeah, Later on, I would maybe try and advise. I would put it on like a whip with a hose. Okay. Because I think that's eventually going to vibrate off. Okay. Just, it's like fitting with a fitting with a fitting. Yeah, you know? I got you. So if you can do, you can still keep that, I don't know, whatever that is, number three or four, and then just like put like a little mount there. Okay. And then like run like a, okay. a six inch hose or something like that. Okay. Whatever is enough to keep it from pulling on it. Yeah. That might help just at least with vibration and stuff. Okay. Um, it is a compressed air car. So CO2? A, yeah, I know, no, actual compressed air. It's got an air compressor and tank in it. Oh, okay. That is the leader for the internal slave cylinder. The only thing we did, I don't know what I'm doing or how to do, was how to set up the, the slipper valve. Mm -hmm. um, it's not plugged in right now, but everything's wired to it. It's on a yellow input. Or yellow output. There's a couple different ways that you can do it. Okay. Um, generic duty cycle output or progressive nitrous output, something like that, that you can have so that it's um, enabled. Call it like while it's on the two step, and mm -hmm. then like you can basically PWM it out over time. Okay. Um, yeah, because we didn't want it to be on all the time in case he did have to clutch it at some point, and then yeah. it'd be dragging at 140 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, We'll set that up later. We don't okay. need it. We don't need it for right yeah, now. Yeah, that's why I unplugged it and just things I'm thinking of so I don't forget before we leave. What? How big of a fuel pump is it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a seven gallon a minute Mormon. Okay. And it's our 240s and like an injector dynamics. Yes, exactly. Okay. Cool. Right, let me go get my computer. Cool. And then they want to do uh, M1 after that. Okay. Did you guys any, ever had like back pressure too high on, on the 85? We actually never monitored it. Oh, okay. So, so that's we, a new sensor. We, well, okay. we've had the sensor on it, but okay. we never really knew what we were looking at. And okay. our previous tuner, he was not really looking either. He, okay. I don't know what the answer is. We're like, okay, well, it's still making power. It keeps going. Man, it's really, yeah, really, that's a really useful sensor on mm -hmm. the turbo car. You know, like he indicates the drive, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like your. I wouldn't say that, but like to some to some extent it is. It's almost like your your gear ratio on your supercharger, mm -hmm. right? How much you actually trying to push the thing, yep. right? And then the 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 turbo RPM becomes like just a result, mm -hmm. right? But it's how much pressure can you apply on that thing? It's gonna go up or down. If it's too much, you know, ain't gonna yeah. work. And it can even break just like a supercharger, mm -hmm. you know. So it's really useful. That's what I was asking. Um, if you guys had some idea. He already kind of tells you once you move to M1 if it's gonna pick up, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're not on that, you know, dangerous threshold about doing too much back pressure, M1 will have way more. Oh, okay. And then it will drive the turbo harder. Okay. Yeah. So if you're an auto turbo on the compressor side mm -hmm. and you change to M1, you gain boost and you gain power. Okay. Right? Straight up, right? Even if it makes less power per pound, like. Hey, race gas, mm -hmm. right? In the end, the same turbo will make more boost and it will make more power. Okay. Right. So that's that's one of the good things about yeah. it. 
Yeah, our biggest thing was the, the cooling factor of M1. Uh, when we had the C85 M1 mix in it, after five or six pulls, the exhaust valves would be messed up and bent. Mm -hmm. So we're like, man, the M1 burning colder, maybe we'll keep our valves in it. Now we got thicker exhaust valves too. If it ends up being like, okay, now it's too rich, it's like, okay, well, we can take that back out when we go yep. again. Yeah, we know it was just the pro position. Yeah. Makes sense. Are they all relatively like the same depth yes. into the header? Yeah, he measured the depth. The angles are slightly different, but he measured the depth on them. Okay. Yeah, because that was 25 degrees of timing on like nine pounds at the, at the very top. And you can see that it went like it, it was rich overall, but it like laid over rich here mm -hmm. with RPM. Oh, yeah. So. I'm more after getting my getting it flat and on the target that I'm asking for mm -hmm. than anything else right now. I don't really care if it's maximum power air fuel ratio or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right now, anyway. It's, yep. it's once I establish the kind of a shape, then that basically can scale with the, with the manifold pressure. Okay. less boost while we're spooling loading against the dyno and like slide it in with RPM which I've been trying to do mm -hmm. but I'm also trying to do it so that we don't um, we only have so long of a run yeah you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and so you got to ramp it in fast enough but not too fast and between the gear changes if you do a lot of retard like negative 30 negative 40 degrees it would be like stupid retard okay Almost all the combustion happened on the exhaust that makes turbo goes up. Okay. What happened after that, we don't know if it's yeah, the it's suspension a... or the tire is going to take it. Okay. So, playing yeah, start, with that timing, essentially, okay. essentially, what my recommendation will be starting with zero degrees. Okay. So, during gear change, it will drop the timing to zero. Okay. That is retarded, but not that not much. Very, yeah. And if you need to actually drop some power between after the gear change, you can move it to the main uh, ignition table. So you will keep the same time that is on the on the main table during the cut. Okay. So when you said you're putting it in zero, that's the actual timing you yes. want it to see. So yes. if I put in negative 30, it's going to see negative 30 yes. degrees. Okay. Yes, that's absolute timing. Okay, so it's not pulling from what it currently is. That's what I'm yes, wanting. Yes, it okay. goes there okay. with that timing. Okay. Okay. And do a lot of ignition retard and small amount of cut normally softer for the engine. 
Okay. Now, when you, when the timing is slightly higher, the cut need to be also slightly higher. So you would need to do actually more cut versus uh, to not too much return. So when you lower the timing, mm -hmm. you can lower also the cut. Okay. When you increase the timing, you need to increase the cut. Okay. Some transmission wants more, some transmission wants less. Okay. Depending on the rota rotational mass on the, the gears, essentially. Yeah. Uh, w which brand was it? Uh, PPG, the Pit, uh, Fissner gearbox. Those are very good. Yeah. Those, are, yeah. those are very, very fast. So normally with 40% of cut and zero timing should be enough. Okay. How much ignition cut? I would put something that is normal for almost everything to start. Okay. It may be too much of cut, but later on on the log you will see how much okay. actually needed. Yeah, because we've never drove a strain gauge car, so we're try we don't know what settings would anything. Yeah. Uh, I would put a minimum TPS just in case. Uh, let me just load up this and see what sensitivity needs the lever. The thing is, you can hold it in first gear because it's going to 5 volt, and right now the ECU is waiting to the 1.5. Before it pulls it. So you can pull it, go to second, and hold it because now after that cut, the ECU is waiting on the other on the other That makes sense. So that logic it has that to to prevent that. Okay. And we we were under the impression that people with strain gauge, they touch it and then never touch it again. They're so scared of touching it's well, a big issue. To give you an idea, on, on the very first stages on our, even our system was like that. Okay. And almost all the system were like that, but we added something on the on the logic to say, hey, yeah. once you did this, the cut on that direction, okay. don't look for it anymore. Makes you need sense. to look in on the other direction so you can okay. hold the, the gear if you want. Um, okay, cool. All right, so you can continue sense. drive how you used to drive. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did the same thing <laughs> I was walking and like it moved my leg from under me. I was like, oh, shit. I am satisfied there.